about it for a long period of time. And I finally came up with that, let me just take this and incorporate this into the museum concept as an outreach program and develop a program where I can reach kids and motivate kids. So uh, I also did another, I, I did the earth science a couple more times for my friend for her classroom and a colleague, his science class, I did it for her, their, for, I went in and did it for her classes and I went in and did it for his classes. And then I got the same response. Kids were so excited. They wanted to go digging with me. They said, you going to, next time you go to Christmas, I want to go with you. Kids were saying, I want to major in science now. They wrote papers to the teachers. They wrote, and the teachers were calling me and telling me. So I said, this is really, this is really catching, something that can really catch on. So now, this, uh, this really fell right into what I was trying to do, my idea of creating a museum down the road. So I began to focus more and more as a part of my plan to get to the museum park. Uh, there were two phases. Let me talk about um, uh, the first phase of uh, the whole concept was to get enough minerals and collect minerals so that I could say I had a museum. So what I started doing is just going out and collecting different minerals. And, uh, and I still do it today, I've, but for the last five years I take uh, at least six to eight trips a year, either to different areas or there's rock shows that take place people don't realize all across the United States in the summertime almost every weekend. So I can go all over the Midwest, I go to different cities, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Wisconsin, Iowa. They're, they have about six rock shows in Illinois, I go to Michigan. So I start taking these trips and also go to different trips where they have big uh, mineral museums around in Michigan, Wisconsin, the universities. So I take all these trips and I've been acquiring all these different minerals and also I go to Tucson and another place in Arizona Quartzsite, they have big shells. I acquire minerals. So my idea was to acquire all these minerals to the point where I would have a museum. What I could say I have a museum, because a museum is, uh, if you have a museum, you have, to have, uh, you have to have something to say you have a museum. So I de developed, went and acquired all these different specimens. But the one thing about my specimens versus a lot of museum specimens, you can have a nice mineral specimen that's a nice specimen, but it's not artistic. Mm -hmm. So what I decided to do was, now I'm reaching back to my artistic when I was in, went to art school and I was doing my sculpture. So I said, I want my pieces to be artistic mm -hmm. and, I, and create art out of them. So I wanted to merge the artistic part of it together with the mineral part of it. So. I see a lot of nice, nice mineral specimens but they're, that are crystals and beautiful, but they're not artistic. So I look at thousands of pieces to find one that's artistic. And some of them, nature made them, they're so beautiful, all I have to do is present them as art. And other ones I sculpt and shape and modify, just try to accent nature's beauty, not to make my own because nature's already created it, but accent nature's beauty and present it as art. So. Nature's treasures, that's what it does. It acquires minerals, presents them as art. But for the museum, so I came up with a different concept. So what I decided to do was merge the two concepts together and come up with the part that, okay, nature's treasures is gonna acquire the minerals, create the art, put it in the museum. Now, the museum is gonna function on the educational part of it. And, the, and I'm gonna talk about that in a little bit more detail later on. So what's so, now I'm fo fo focusing on uh, nature's treasures, and what I did was, I have uh, right now I have probably have about 700 to 1,000 pieces that I've collected and created, and they're the size of probably a melon all the way up. They have some that are two, three feet tall samples that are two, three feet tall, and uh, the taller ones are a combination of more than one different mineral, two or three minerals together and I've created a sculpture out of it, but it accents the beauty of all three pieces, and they all go well together. So, the next thing I decided to do was to focus on, uh, uh, I noticed is, I go around, uh, I started noticing that you hear about science. Science is the future, and, and me being in science and being having the opportunity to be in science and all the doors it opened up for me, and I look at our society today, science is involved in everything. It pushes everything forward. And I look at our schools from when I was in school to now is, I noticed one thing is, Americans are not going into science. When you go to our schools, they're 
our science programs are all full of foreigners. You go to our engineering schools, they're all foreigners. It's like, and I begin, Malaya, what are we, not, we're not doing something. We got away from something that we were doing in the 60s and 50s where people were wanting to major in science to now where we're having fewer and fewer people majoring in science or, or even understanding science that I says, well, something's wrong here. We're not doing something. And I said, okay, well, and I looked at how excited I got kids when I went and talked to my friend's science class and career day, and I said, well, how can I take this and use that to motivate kids to go into science instead of complaining, complaining about we're not doing a good job, what can I do to make a difference to motivate kids to go into science? Never thought I would be a teacher or want to be a teacher, because when my parent, my dad was a teacher, and I said, I would never do that. But now since I'm older, I see, I see, I, I want to give back. It's time for me to give back. It's time for me to do something. I have the ability to do something now. I'm in the position to, and I've been building on this. So I'm going to use this museum and program to motivate kids to go into science. So what I decided to do was, you know, if you look at the, uh, what I decided to do was to um, take my program and fine tune my program. So what I did was, what I did in the classroom, but how can I make it, I came up, what do I, first I reached back to what got me when I was a kid. So I looked back, okay, I, my parents exposed me, so I was exposed, I got excited. And when I got excited, I wanted to get engaged and I got engaged with the chemistry sets and everything. And I began to learn on my own. So I, I, I just reached back and examined what got me into it and came up with the three E's. You expose people, through exposure you get them excited, and once you get them excited, you engage them, and then they're motivated, and then kids are ready to learn. So I just use my example, I look back and talk to friends who were in science, what got them into it? So I decided, came up with the three E's. So the basis of my, I decided to come up with an educational program, which I have Dawson Crystal Mineral Museum, and use the three E's. So those are the building blocks, the three E's. So I decided to build my program about exposing, getting them excited, and then engaging them. So when I went to the schools before, I exposed them by showing them and telling them about minerals and crystals as the building blocks. Everything we have around us is built out of minerals and crystals. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have anything. So I tell them that. So, and then I get them excited by handing the minerals around and letting them touch them and see them. But I really didn't do the engage part. So I've decided to work on a program to incorporate that and keep because I'm gonna, I wanna get them excited, but I just wanna do a lot more than just getting them excited. I want them to be engaged once I leave them. Mm -hmm. So Dawson Crystal Mineral Museum, I reached out to family. I come from a family of teachers, principals, superintendents, educational consultants, and people that are in science. So I reached out to bounce my ideas off of these professionals who are experts in their field. Going back to reaching and getting people involved who are expert in the field, and making my idea better and ran my idea by, by them. And they have fine-tuned it and helped me come up with ideas and look at things differently. So right now I have the three E's which is for the Dawson Crystal Mineral Museum, which is excite, excite by, expo, uh, expose first. So I get them exposed by going and talk about them, talking about minerals, elements, the rock cycle and everything. Then I get them, uh, so I go through all that. Then I get them excited by handing out Samples, every kid gets to touch and see every sample in the entire classroom of minerals from Illinois compared to other minerals from around the world in all of the different categories, the fluorite category, the geo category, and the pyrite category. And I'm gonna add another one, calcite too, category to it. So I get to handle from all parts of the world and see how the different conditions in different parts of the world have an impact on the different crystals. So that's the uh, excite part. Now the engaged part is, that I didn't do before, is to give the kids, their, each kid their own crystal. In their own, so they can have it in, in a pouch they can carry in their pocket. Also give each kid two books explaining about minerals and the basis uh, all about the minerals and different minerals from around. And also the next thing is minerals from the, uh, from, from the United States. Then the next thing I decided to do was to, um, so I got them excited now I need to engage them. 
So I, they have their minerals, they have their books, and also I decided to leave something for the teacher. I decided to leave um, posters for the teacher that tie into the books that they have, and also leave crystal growing kits so that she can engage the kids and they can break up into groups and grow their own crystals as groups. Mm. So that's part of my program. Uh, I'm at the point now where I'm gonna roll the program out and go around to different, um, different uh, schools. Next thing I wanna talk about is the, the, the Dawson Crystal Mineral Museum. Uh, I have two phases of the Dawson Crystal Mineral Museum. The one phase is to get into schools. Next phase is to go after grant money so I can go into schools that maybe can't afford it or reach out to kids in different programs or offer different stuff in, in, in uh, communities at uh, centers where kids try to get them excited about different things. Also, reach out for corporate sponsors who can uh, also sponsor me to go into a school or sponsor me to go into a community center or work with Boy Scouts. And then also phase one is my building fund to have the building to start putting together a program to have money so that we can open up a museum through corporate sponsors, grants, and other different things and fundraisers. Uh, phase two of it is opening, uh, once I get the building open, opening the building up and then offering a variety of programs and training within the museum. So and let me talk a little bit uh, and also engage students and adults. So let me talk about my concept for the museum a little bit. So the museum, uh, it's gonna be slightly different than the, than, than the normal museum. Cause I know growing up, we went to every museum there was. My dad used to take us to all the museums. So I said, okay, now, once you go to a museum once, unless they get something new there, you normally don't wanna go back. <laughs> so what I assess is how can I make people wanna come back to the museum, engaging them? So I says, okay, now, if I'm always changing things in the museum out, so that it's always changing, they'll want to come back to see what's, what he has different this time. So what I decided to do was to uh, create, it's a museum in the daytime. I have the educational programs and people going out to the schools and working with the schools. I have the students coming, I have the students coming back to the museum because we have a, a museum program and an in-classroom program. But at night, it's going to be an art gallery. All the stuff that I've created is artistic. It's, home it's going to be, at night, it's going to be, everything you see in the museum is for, is for sale at night. So, it will, you can purchase it. Also, I was going to have a store in the museum. And also, one of the other things I decided to do was to have, um, you can also rent the space out in the, in the evening to have different functions, corporate functions and that. Uh, so I was going to open it up to the community and I wanted to reach out and engage everybody. Some of the other things I wanted to do was to um, uh, have different programs. Um, like right now, and being in the member of the Chicago Rock and Mineral Society, I begin to find out how vast it is that, and how it spreads out. And it's helped expand my idea a lot in terms of uh, of what a museum can do. And what I found out that a lot of the different sciences are interrelated. So I began to find out like um, people that are into the minerals and crystals and rocks are in the fossils. So uh, rocks, fossils are nothing but rocks and petrified wood and different things. So I began to say, okay, that's a little different area. Then I began to say people, uh, you, you have crystals, you have, you have uh, fossils. Then another area I found out people are, are into gemstones mm -hmm. and making jewelry and that kind of stuff. So in the rock society, we have, it's broken up into three different divisions. It's broken up into fossils, crystals and minerals, and jewelry making. And a lot of them is just not jewelry making as much as cutting the stones. Lapidary was making a rock and turning into around some gemstones, which they facet. All that is covered in, in, in the rock society. I mean, we, we touch on all three of those different areas. So down the road, I wanted to expand the, the museum, not to just do uh, crystals and minerals, but also expand into the other areas to offer classes. And also offer, there's a lot of opportunities where there's trips you can go on to uh, throughout, like in Illinois, they have a geodes or on, on, over on the Mississippi, they have a geode festival. And people come from all over the United States and we have like, I, I go every year, we had about three, 400 people there 
from around the United States, all over the United States. Uh, ha having field trips to reach out. There's a field trip in Arkansas. There's a diamond park where you can go. Anybody can go to the, a state park and hunt for diamonds and they find diamonds. So offer field trips for families. For, for, so for the museum to have an outreach program and offer different types of things besides the courses like that. So that's my goal down the road is to eventually offer those types of things for kids and offer programs for kids because uh, there is in by being in the Chicago Rock and Mineral Society, we uh, we expanded our program to reach out to kids and we started a kids program. And uh, it's sort of like the scouts. You can earn merit badges and stuff. Mm. And uh, so they have a program like that. The Chicago Rock and Mineral Society is in Skokie. So a lot of people in Chicago can't get to it. So my goal is to centrally locate my museum, start a club in the museum, and also have a program where once we start a club, we can have a place where kids can come to, come to the museum, have a, the museum will have its own club, adults, kids, engage everybody, but also have a program for kids to earn patches, like in the scouts, and do all the different things, and articles, and field trips, and stuff, to, to continue that engagement of adults and kids and exposure. So the main thing is just uh, exposure. And uh, I see is the key to everything is exposure, exposing people to, to the different things that are out there. I'm just gonna touch on a few of the things. Right here I have a, uh, there are a lot of sciences come out of uh, mineralogy. There's like, mineralogy has to do with chemistry, minerals are based on chemical makeup. So the chemical makeup, uh, so you have mineralogy, you have uh, crystallography, you have metallurgy, you have chemistry, you have uh, all of the geology is broken down into different categories, paleontology, all those are just some of the many uh, sciences that are interrelated. There's a lot of other sciences because uh, Physics is the basics behind of a lot of things that go on. So there's a lot of sciences and they're all interrelated. So I, my main goal is to just motivate kids to go into science. And if I can expose them and get them excited about it, and hopefully they can have the opportunity and be blessed like I was to, have, to, have, to work and be exposed to all these vast things all over. And uh, that's it. Now, I told you you were going to be excited by Mr. Wayne Dawson, and I'm sure you were as I was. Uh, I didn't even realize actually till today that we both had uh, experiences in the space shuttle program. I was, I was a part of the ground crew uh, that used to help um, test the satellites after the shuttle dropped them off. So that was, that was kind of fascinating. Thanks for sharing. Um, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the number of science-related jobs um, uh, will increase at a rate faster than the national average between now and uh, 2016. Environmental scientists, uh, hydrologists, geologists will uh, experience this fast growth. So what you just learned from uh, listening to Mr. Dawson, this Dawson Crystal and Mineral Museum uh, with the mission of exposure and, and uh, excitement and engagement um, is really something that we all need to listen and, and carefully uh, engage. I do a fair amount of educational consulting and, and one popular term out there is called a flipped classroom. Flipped classroom. What a flipped classroom concept says is that you need to uh, engage students through YouTube videos or other uh, hands-on projects before you actually go into a lecture situation. Let the students engage themselves with the new concept and interact with the new concept. And then you come in with your theories and, and the like. And then maybe go online and answer some more questions and, and then wrap it up. So uh, Dawson's goal is to provide a more engaged educational experience than is currently available. Making the world of geology and natural minerals uh, come to life. His, his curriculum is designed to align with the students' current courses at K-12 systems. So don't, don't see this as replacing anything. This is an augmentation. So I hope that you out there in this listening audience learned a lot from listening to this show as, as you do every Friday. I'm sure you tune in uh, more than this particular show, but uh, this was a fabulous experience for me and I hope it was for you. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you.